You are listening to the postcast presented by the Locked On Senators podcast and the Glebe Central Pub. Make sure you check out the Glebe Central Pub right in the heart of the Glebe. Great food, awesome drinks, the atmosphere to match. Glebe Central Pub, 779 Bank Street. And let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. I'm Ross Levitan. Pilsy is with me. Of course, we are boots on the ground in Minnesota, and we brought the host of Locked On Wild with us, Seth Dupal. And what an absolute beauty. He's rocking the Send Central merch. He looks good, and he brought us our first ever regulation loss in person. We're still 13-0-1 in Canada, but we'll talk about that later. 13-1-1 now, all-time. Pilsy, how are you feeling after that? 3-2 loss to the Minnesota Wild. Yes, 3-2 loss to the Minnesota Wild. First off, the XL's Energy Center is an incredible barn. Uh, there's no denying that. We had an absolute blast there. It was a close game. I'm not too upset. I'm not too frustrated. This was a very close game that the Ottawa Centers, I thought, dominated most of the play. Like, Seth, you, we were talking. We were looking at the shots in the second period, and the Sens were out shooting the Wild, like, 22 to 9 and ultimately the minnesota wild they were able to get it through with depth scoring uh the one uh narrative that i hammered on today's show the wild have no depth scoring it's all going to be caprizov sure enough shaw and what's the other guy's name letary letary vinny letary vinny letary are the ones that close this one out for the minnesota wild so sonk on me on that take but uh yeah overall a nice Good game. Hey, Seth was a very gracious host to us here in Minnesota. What are your thoughts on tonight's game? Matt Boldy. How about that, folks? 26th goal of the season. Absolute snipe to get things started in period two. And uh, the Wilds get a little bit of Marc-Andre Fleury down the stretch. This was honestly the most Pilsy and Ross sends game of all time Classic. because we were in line getting a drink when Matt Boldy scored. I'm, a, I'm more of an italics guy anyways than bold, but <laughs> we'll give Matt Boldy that one. It was a great shot. It was a great shot. And then Kirill Kaprizov, just talking wild real quick, like every time he's on the ice, he's one of those guys you have to know where he is. And if you don't, You'll find out real quick. Well, he's so. the one that set up that Boldy goal. A real nice backhand pass off the wall, and uh, Boldy he's, just had to put that one away. Should we get to the goal he really scored, too? Yeah, yeah, wild. The XL Energy Center was losing their minds about that one. Rightfully so. That puck was sitting beside Corpy, but the whistle was blown, and uh, the barn was... Uh, I thought the roof was going to fall off on that one. But it was one of those where you know that it's meant to be a goal, but once the go once the play is blown dead, whether it's by accident or intent, it's just no goal. So when they scored the three two goal, which happened like two shifts later, like it was right after, literally immediately after, it was almost the hockey gods being like, "You knew that was coming." Yeah, they, puck don't lie. And one of those where it like sends fans and everybody listening to like that that was a goal. It was sitting right next to Corpus Allo. It was just one of those where the ref was in the wrong spot or the right spot for the Ottawa Senators, and they called it no goal. So it was unfortunate. Look, we're not feeling great about this, but honestly, when it was 2 nothing Minnesota in the first period, it could have gotten a lot worse. And credit to the Ottawa Senators for fighting back. Like, Drake Batherson was unreal tonight. Goal and an assist. He was in the rock star zone all night. I don't know if they're taking the ice out of the XL Energy Center and putting a stage in there for Drake Batherson tomorrow. But he was ready to rock and roll. And I thought he had a great game. But overall, look, this is a game that I wish meant more to both teams. Feels like the Sens, we know for a while they've been out of the race, but they're giving us this win streak that's making us feel good. For the Wild, it was like, it was that LA game, right? That kind of like put the nail in the coffin. Can I quantify too for my audience? Because a lot of them are under the assumption that I've either been kidnapped or have been uh, held against my will. Um, I ended up betting on the Wild to lose this game no i didn't and know so that this this is what i get this is what i get because they ended up winning i am going to follow through and make good on the fact that i was going for greater good and we didn't get it so that's uh that's why i've got the sense garb on here tonight but yeah you I don't have sense garb on you got sense central sense central Looks oh, okay okay Looks okay, okay listeners this is not senators gear this is locked on senators gear so available on the store uh link in bio 
keep that uh, keep that going. So yeah, it, it's you're exactly right. This this game just meant nothing at this point in the season. Like we're all we're all in the tankathon. We're all in the um, we're all in the greater good mode. And so the fact that the Wilds got the win led to uh, many eye rolls. But I don't know. It was it was fun for me to be in but, the stands. Seth, if the Wilds hadn't conceded that uh, point in overtime, getting scored on the empty net, does that change things, or the one point isn't enough to to swing your narrative on uh, no. winning or losing? No, it's still no. it's a percentage points playoff chance at that point. Even if they do, even if they do get those two points, they're still like seven out at this point. I, I think I'd it, kill to be seven out. <laughs> It's it's way too much, and so at this point, we're just we're just playing out the string. So the Ottawa Senators were winners of five in a row. We talked this morning on Locked On Senators about how the last time the Sens had won six in a row, like Chris Kelly played all six games. Oh boy! Like That's we're sad. we're going to back to 2017 March. Alex Burrows was a newly member of the Ottawa Senators. Like it had been that long. Brady Kachuk had never played on a game on a team that won six straight games. But he won five, and he was feeling good about himself. And he said, in particular, that the goalies were the reason. But to me, this wasn't a goalie game. I thought Corpy made some good saves. Again, though, second shot of the game goes in. 17th time this year that the Sens have allowed a goal in the first two shots. Because you look, Pilsy, the shots three quarters away through the first. Ottawa, what? What were the shots in the first period? Well, look at that. Not just the first period, Ross. So first period, 11-5 Sens. Second period, 11, 8 cents. Third period, 10, 7 cents. Like the Minnesota Wild didn't have a period where they get double digit shots, yet they're able to pull away a 3 2 in this. But I didn't think, like, yes, Flurry made some saves, most notably short handed. It was a chintzy call. I didn't Elite. like the call. I didn't like the call. There were a couple soft calls both ways. But Gosian's 220 pounds standing still. I don't think he's going down that easily every time. Now, <laughs> That to say, Ottawa killed off some penalties, and I felt like the penalty on Ottawa at the end of the second period was bad, but then I also, and Ottawa killed it off, started the third, and then I felt like the penalty that Minnesota took on Ottawa, where the Sens ended up scoring Jacob Chikrin on the power play, was not a great call. I thought that it was, you know what, I would have let him play, but it's one of those where because the penalty on Ottawa was called with 10 seconds left in the period, that you know the refs went in the room and were like, okay, if I'm calling that, I got to call everything to the hands. And Bogosian spun around, and he got Timmy's hands coming in. Usually, I'd be like, all right, let it go, battle through it. But you know what? You're going to call one, you're going to call the other. And Ottawa scored both their goals on the power play tonight. So Ottawa got zero even strength goals. They did not deserve to win this game. But damn, they made me think they were going to when they made it 2-2. And that's been the MO with this wild team all season is that this penalty kill just can't, they just can't keep the opponent from scoring. And so it becomes a volume issue for this, uh, this wild team. They get called for way too many penalties. They were fourth in the NHL last time I checked with like 887 penalty minutes so Sheesh. far this season, trending towards a thousand. Just, <laughs> just, just, do they have any like fighters? They've got a few. I guess Pat Maroon back in the back when you had him. One game, one game in which you accumulate seventy nine penalty minutes will do that. Well, you should have got a few more at the end. Like, do you <laughs> want to jump right to that? Okay, can can the chat let us know? Because you guys saw it on TV. We were live in the building. We saw it clear, and all pills and I are looking for. We're begging. We're on our knees. We're saying, "Hey, all eighty five churches in St. Paul, can you please allow this to be icing?" But it wasn't only icing. All of a sudden, there's a melee brewing in the Minnesota zone. Who else but Brady Kachuk in the middle of it? But all I looked up, I saw Brady, and then I saw Joel Erickson Eck and Brock Faber were the next two guys. Neither guy gets a call. Brady gets a double minor. Yeah, and Freddie Goudreau is the one that gets called for the penalty. And it's, I mean, it's a little different seeing it from the stands than it is on TV and or in the press box. When they called Goudreau for the penalty, I'm like, was he even in the play? Like, did he come off the bench? Like, what's happening? Yeah. What's I didn't, going on here? I didn't like that. I thought at the very least it would be uh, coincidental. Like, I, right. I don't understand how at all that Brady ends up getting the double minor there. Why? Because he took on two players uh, by himself. Well, the kicker was looking for pennies up at center ice, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. And and just, just to hammer home that the narrative that I had on today's show is even more wrong. I was talking about how good the Minnesota Wild power play was. 
uh, checks notes. They go 0 for 4, and the Ottawa Senators go 2 for 3 on their power plays. So, so I'm Amanda, completely whiffed on this one. Amanda's saying Brady started it. Look, I get that. But the two guys who jumped him after neither get one. And I thought Faber got the best got the best uh, punch in of all those. Well, like, I, I just think overall, like especially in a one goal game, you just take everybody. And even if the refs had taken everybody and made it a center ice face off, I mean, there's 11 seconds left. It's probably game over. But to then put it all the way into the senator's zone and make it a two versus a four, did that look like an odd man fight? If anything, it was too wild on one senator. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. whether who started or not, and if Brady started it, that wouldn't be the first, probably won't be the last time in his career that he starts something late in the game, but you just wish that they drop it at center ice. At least that would have taken out any doubt. And then, look, Wild win the faceoff, it's over. Well, I'll lose the faceoff, probably still over. But to have it all the way down when it was an offense, the, the play didn't even happen in the Minnesota zone. It happened below the goal line. So for it to go below the goal line all the way to the other side of the ice with 11 seconds left just felt like a bit of unnecessary gamesmanship. But we good thing we don't talk about the refs on this show. No, <laughs> of course not. Yeah, no, I did, I did enough of that for both of us for uh, today's episode. So. We're doing the Lord's work. Today's episode, as always, the postcast is brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. Make sure you check out the Glebe Central Pub wherever you get your podcasts. We're also available on YouTube. But when you come to the Glebe Central Pub, you always know you're going to get great food, great drinks, and the atmosphere to match. We're letting Seth know, look, you we've been down to Minnesota now. Have you ever been to Canada before? No. You have to get not only to Canada, but to Ottawa, the capital of the country, and to the Glebe Central Pub. Right in the heart of Glebe, it's a neighborhood pub. You love neighborhood pubs, right? I, I love neighborhood How pubs. How about a pub? So in Ottawa, the rink is not downtown. The rink is about 25 minutes out. So do you want to drive out there? No. No. You want to be able to leave your keys at home and have a great time. And at the Glebe Central Pub, I need our people in the chat to let us know because we're on Locked on Wild too. Who is driving the bus? From the Glebe Central Pub all the way to the CTC? I'm going to wait for the answer. I'll let you know, though, that at the Glebe Central Pub, they always have something cooking, whether it is trivia night, whether it's live music, whether it's open mic night, it's always at the Glebe Central Pub. Anthony knows Sue! Sue's going to drive you to and from the CTC. Sue's got the vibe. Sue's got the energy. So the bus leaves an hour and 15 minutes before the game. Right to the right to the rink. You're there before Lyndon Slewage gets going because you can't miss Lyndon Slewage at the Sens game. Sue will take you to the game. Sue will bring you back afterwards and all in one piece. She knows where to get to the Glebe Central Pub. Shout out to the Glebe Central Pub, 779 Bank Street. Let them know. Locked on Senators. Sent you. Wait, Ross, how, how expensive are the vibes at the GCP? The vibes are free at the GCP, but you can also get the Send Shuttle for only $17. They have tickets available for all three remaining games at the Glebe Central Pub. Shout out to everyone who's saying, Sue, I love that so much. Absolutely. And this episode is also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. You guys know, Seth knows, all the Locked On Wild listeners here know that FanDuel is the official online sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. And because it's North America's number one sports book, why would you go anywhere else if you want to bet on the Minnesota Wild to lose the game like <laughs> Seth did? That's where you're going to go. If you want to bet on Brady Kachuk to get shots, if you want to bet on the Ottawa Senators, reverse puck line that would have hit tonight that would have been a good one or maybe you're thinking okay the season's dying down here i'm gonna get into march madness it's getting close here the frozen four will be held here in minnesota so if you want to get some action in on that you that's can gonna be awesome fan duel it's gonna be a good time and so much more basketball mlb season has started and you can bet on all of it with the best sports book around check out the app it's safe simple secure easy to use and right now new customers if you bet $5 and your bet wins, you can get $200 in bonus bets. That's an incredible deal to get you started. So check it out today, guys. www.fanduel.com slash locked on. And remember, new customers, any winning $5 bet gets you $200 in bonus bets. Check it out today, guys. North America's number one sports book. It's FanDuel. Welcome back to the Send Central postcast, as always. But we also have Locked On Wild here. We love our guy, Seth. Finally get to meet him in person. We just started pounding on his door tonight. 
He's four doors down, just like the housekeeping did for us at 8.55 this morning. Oh, geez. Too bad I wasn't three doors oh. down. There you go. Gotcha. Hey, I want, to, uh, I want to shout out a comment by my guy, Denny. Um, first time that the fourth line for the Minnesota Wild has scored multiple goals in a game since our dearly departed Connor Dewar scored oh. a hat-trick. And that was a considerable amount of time ago. I'm pulling it up right now. But uh, his hat trick was good lord. A while ago, in here, that was a Seth's long. Got the scroll going on. I'm gonna give a couple shout outs in the meantime. That's what Sh- you call the Pillsy Mush. Right Alex there. Micheletti is here from Locked On Wild. Micheletti, what happened? There? But n- you know that his old man was like an OG. Legend. No, 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 but an OG guest of Locked On Senators. No yeah, way. We had him on the show. The uh, same episode that we had Tim Stutzla on the show. To cover uh, Jake Sanderson, right? Jake Sanderson, yeah. oh, Shane Pinto, J- uh, Jacob Bernard Docker. Yep. You got time, Tyler Clevin. Yep, yep. So That's shout awesome. out to Alex for being here. Shout out as well for our guy Dylan, who's in the chat. We got to meet Dylan at Tom Reed's before the game, so that was a blast as well. Okay. Connor Dewar, tell me a zero goals with Toronto first. That'll make me feel better. I can't tell you that, but uh, I can tell you the hat trick for Dewar was November 30th. Okay, so that's a while wow. ago. So that was you guys uh, had just lost long, Ottawa in Sweden. Long time ago. <laughs> um, he scored, he just scored against Washington on the 28th. Yo, so. can we can we get some Sen Central standouts? We'll do a wild standout too, or a hashtag that's Let's wild. wild. Oh, oh nice. just it's just free money. <laughs> that's wild. No, we'll get to that's wild soon. Can I go? Can I go first? Go for it, Ross. Drake Batherson was so nasty tonight. Rock star zone his first goal, then puts it on a tee for Jacob Chikrin. Where's Chikrin. Chicky? He knew. Where's Chicky? Do you know? He knew. He knew. He's backside one timer. Drake Batherson was the best Ottawa Senator on the ice, and it wasn't even close. I'm gonna give the next Sen Central stando to our guy Seth. Seth, who on the stands did you notice tonight? You know, he's been linked to the wild in the past, but uh, how about my guy, Jacob Chikrin? Just uh, just doing his thing. He uh, he had the snipe. For, Trade you uh, Boldy for him? No, no. Boldy's off limits. Matt Boldy is off limits. He had the goal tonight. He had an assist. He got two points. Did have a minus two, but that's classic Chicky. Yeah, still. Yeah, that's classic Chicky. Chicky is cold like Minnesota when it cold comes like to Cold like Minnesota. Minnesota. Cold like Minnesota. Ooh. Saw that video tonight. But you liked time. him. You liked his game. Yeah, I, I thought he was. I thought he was smooth out there. I um, I can see why the Wild had interest in him. Interest in him at points in the past. I don't know if I do now, but well, and and that could be an interesting piece there. If uh, we were talking earlier, Jared Spurgeon looks like he's probably on the uh, riding the sunset with a couple major injuries late in his career. So yeah, you're looking for a defenseman. That could be a guy that's an option there. Dr. JBN, I can't pull up that tweet because it doesn't look good on paper. But if you're watching this postcast on Saturday, there was a family that the dad just didn't like me. It's fine. Um, We we loved. There were some kids right in front of us. Look, we're good people when we're at games. I truly believe. Look, we were visitors in your rink. Were you all right? Yeah, we're annoying respectfully. You have the you have the competitive fire, but respectfully, yeah. And no cursing in your kids. Like, we got the rules going. So, I honestly think that it wasn't a problem tonight. Winnipeg, I think they were projecting a lot with a five-game, six-game losing streak after Ottawa that they were just very upset with with what happened. So, look, the Ottawa Senators tonight, they disappointed in a sense. But honestly, like, to battle back after being down 2 nothing on the road – Tied up in the third period. They had their, ch- I mean, the play of the game. Like, if we were to narrow this entire game Jason down, turning point to one play, it's 2 2 in the third period. Minnesota gets a huge power play, and right away, Ridley Gregg gets a breakaway. And Caprizov made a good play to go one way. Yep. He forced him to go backhand, and Flurry made a great save. Like, to me, that's what the game can down to. If Ottawa goes up 3 2 there, it could be a different game. But look, Flurry's in net for a reason. Flurry makes a save. Good for him tonight, and uh, I think that's the game, 3-2 for Minnesota. So my wild player of the game, Marc-Andre Fleury, for Moth. sure. Moth. Yeah. Fleury. He's been beating the Sens for years, dude. He's now 21-10-2 yeah. and two against Ottawa. Some guys just get up for particular teams over and over and over again, and Fleury definitely does that for the Sens. Yeah, and he was doing a really good job 
no rebounds. Like the sends, like Brady was just sending on net. They had a couple times where they send it on net and Flurry just able to smother it. No rebounds, no chaos. And the Ottawa Senators, like a lot of guys, they got Brady, you got Ridley, they feast on those rebounds and Flurry, the vet. Dude, how close how close did Batherson get near the end of the game on a rebound right in front of us? Yeah, that was a close one. And Timmy hit the post earlier oh. on in the game on the power play. Dude, you're like, you're like, don't shoot, don't shoot. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Seth, everybody's waiting for your wild of the game. What's wild to you? Um, I liked I liked Boldy tonight. The fact that he scored, he's got 26 goals now in the season as a 22 year old. And you know you're you're seeing him make some solid plays defensively too. He uh, he ended up with uh, just the one goal, but he had a couple shots. He was a plus one. Um, he continues to. I mean, we we got to keep in mind he's a 22 year old at the end of the day, and he's got now. 57 goals in the last two seasons solid um just like he's just going to continue to add to that arsenal and so the fact that he is one of the members of the best top line in hockey like i'm i'm not just saying that it's the best statistical line in hockey right now the fact that he's part of it is is fantastic and so you know you got that i also do want to give a uh, shout out to mason shaw because on the anniversary of his most recent torn ACL, uh, which makes four, he's for Sens fans, he has had four different ACL surgeries. And so to get his first goal uh, since, what did Micheletti say, since March of 2023? Wow. Um, yeah. And one year anniversary of his fourth surgery. So the fact that, uh, the fact that he got that tonight, you know what? I may, I'll, I'll give, I'll give Shaw the, uh, I'll retroactively give Shaw <laughs> the, the, you put it in italics, yeah. underline it. So that's wild. Boldy was great, but the fact that Shaw on the one year anniversary of tearing his ACL for the fourth time, you got to go with that. Billsy, how Jake Lucini look out there? Yeah, it's good to see you, Jake Lucini. Good kid, as Tim Stitzel would say. Um, but I thought, what are we? What are we coining this? That's wild. That's wild. Uh, the that's wild player for me, Zach Bogosian. That sauce pass that he Bogo. made was that that was on Shaw's goal, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, that crossed over three different players. Like it crossed over, I think, a Sens fan that was pinching towards him, a wild player that was behind him. A Sens that. fan that was <laughs> pinching towards him. <laughs> well, maybe it was us, just a couple Sens fans. Um I was but- going as- <laughs> a sense player rather uh, a wild player and then another sense player right on the tape of Shaw and he buries that one so I thought that was uh, that was a nice play by Bogosian I did not know Bogosian had that sauce it was nasty it was I mean good. he ends up taking a penalty in the third period he probably wants back ends up going back of their net but I thought he was great tonight yep great call Billsy any final thoughts on today's postcast love being boots on the ground seth great great to have you here elite. Man. this is the elite fellas. great to have you here yeah and this uh this is the beauty of the locked on podcast network right like we can go to different cities there's a locked on host for every nhl show we love seeing it all our guys here and uh I will say, Ross, the loss doesn't hurt that much because we've mastered when we win. It's exciting. We love winning. And when we lose, that's okay. It'll help the lottery odds. So we'll spin zone it that way. But to have it now 13-1 and 1, that regulation loss, that stings. That Part of me was hoping it would at least go to overtime yep. so that we can still keep that clean sheet in the middle there. But it hurts. It not, I'm not going to lie. It hurts. We'll be back at the Exile Energy Center, though. Out of all buildings that Absolutely. we've been to, it's I've a been beautiful barn. I've if been you to probably been, fifteen. I highly recommend it. I've probably been to fifteen ranks in the league, and this is right up there. Yeah. It's so enormous. The, the lower bowl. That's what I want to say. The one thing the XL Center Energy Center does really well is the concourse is so wide. There's so many places to to get beers, to get food. Like you're in, in Ottawa, we're shoulder to shoulder in the concourse. Yeah. You, can't, you can't have that in the concourse. And and like you're getting. We got popcorn, hot dog, pizza. Like we're in and Double out there. Double vodka sodas. Yeah, a couple of rum and cokes. But you're in and out of there quickly, so you can get back to the game. Although Ross and I not quickly enough. No, <laughs> as we uh, third period we did though. Yeah, third period we figured it out. But uh, it, it was a great, uh, great arena. There's no denying that. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate you, Seth. 
Were we good guests? And how would you describe your experience at the game tonight? You were very gracious guests. Um, this is the first time for Locked on Wild listeners and for Locked on Sens listeners. This is the first time that I've taken in a game as a fan since taking over as host of Locked on Wild. Um, we're doing this again. Like I want to do, I want to do this more because Yearly I think tradition. I think this allows for a unique perspective you don't get from up in the press box. And so we're going to do boots on the ground. Yes. We're now one zero and zero in boots on the ground games. Let's go. go. Okay. So we're we're getting it going. So um, yeah, we'll we'll have to do this because I I had a bunch of listeners come up to me during the game and say oh, yeah. I, it sick? I was sitting next. I was sitting one seat away from two people. Who said we were wondering where you were sitting tonight? No and way. I was like, they're like, we listen every day. I'm like, local celebrity Seth Dupal. That's why we. That's why we do it. So, that yeah, we're we're gonna make this a yearly tradition. Um, a couple. You gotta times. get up to Ottawa, man. If you've never been to Canada, I know. like Ottawa's the place that'd to be. be. A great, that'd be a great way to get. And it would going. just give the middle yeah, finger to all the Toronto and Habs fans. You think the world revolves around that? But Ottawa is like the Minnesota of Canada. Say hey, it's Toronto. Beautiful. I came to Ottawa first. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my final thoughts, I had a great time in Minnesota. Uh, people said my pizza peed its pants because it was so <laughs> gre- It was so greasy. That was a great line. I love that. I had a great time tonight at the game. Would come back to Minnesota. Absolutely had a blast. I love how someone in the comments just keeps saying F the Leafs. Obviously, we respect Isca. that. Isca, That's your guy? Yep. He's one, of the, uh, he's one of the other podcast hosts in Minnesota, and he is a uh, Vancouver fan, true and true. Look so. how handsome this logo yep. is. Though. Let's uh, let's all hate on the lead. And uh, wait, I, I want one more final thought. Final, Pildy, final thoughts from you. Final, final thought. Uh, Ross, you know we do the final, final thoughts. Uh, or final, final questions. That's what we do. We got thoughts. Uh, shout out to everyone that let us know they saw us on TSN. That We, we love seeing that. Yeah, I made TSN too. That was tight. Did anybody yeah. let us know? Yeah, yeah, we had a <laughs> bunch of people let us know, but that's sweet. That's a uh, verbal meme. The the Leo DiCaprio pointing at the TV. Know those guys. That's the, that all guy. I wanted was for it to be John Abbott and Jamie McLennan. That's all. Yeah, okay. we would have preferred that. And I know Gordon Miller and Mike Johnson, obviously less than I know the previous mentioned guys, but. We are some right. sense they'll, fans. They'll figure it out. They'll we are some out. sense fans, though. Yeah, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. We are yeah. sense fans in Minnesota. It's the, it's the loosest definition you can have for what you two guys. Have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the it's the stratosphere level comparison you can have. That's <laughs> Seth Dupal. If you're listening on Locked On Senators, you can find him Locked On Minnesota Wild five days a week. That's Brandon Biller. Billsy and I will be recording tomorrow morning before we leave the hotel. Hey, me too. Yeah, we'll be here. You damn right we'll be here. And uh, I'm Ross Levitan. As always, you can find the postcast wherever you get your podcast. Also available on YouTube. Thank you to everybody for joining us and for appreciating a wild run. 13 0 and 1 is amazing. All good things must come to an end. But you know what? We have another date on our schedule that we can fix this. Against Montreal, the home closer. April 12th, the home closer. We will be in Ottawa where we got to get the complete stat, but I believe we're something like 9 0 and 0. Oh, and 1. I think I could get a passport by that time. Probably not. (laughs) Well, you know what? We'll call. We'll call in. We'll get that expedited. We'll get get your favorite. Get get the the embassy on it. Let's get me up there. Hey, we got you, buds. Just say sorry. You'll be there. Um, that's, that's that too, pal. That's Brandon Pillar. Go sends go. Appreciate Dylan. Appreciate Karen getting to meet you guys at Tom Reed's. Really do. It was awesome to get to see you guys. See some Seds fans down here revving up the red. But for tonight, we say goodbye. We're heading down to what's the name of it again? Smorgies. Smorgies. We'll be at Smorgies. We're gonna go hang out there yep. for Seth and Brandon. I'm Ross Levitan. Let's get some go sends goes in the chat. You've been listening to the Bosecast presented by the Locked On Senators podcast and the Glebe Central Pub. 779 Bank Street. Go check them out at the Glebe Central Pub. That's it for us. But for more, make sure to subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Go wild.